To find the spectrum for a regular graph, it helps to introduce the following idea. An n by n circulate matrix consists of cycle permuted row A1, A2, and so on. In other words, the first row is A1, A2, A3, and so on. For the second row, we'll take this last entry and move it into the first place, and so our second row will be AN, A1, A2, and so on. And we'll take the last entry and move it to the first place, giving us a third row, and so on. In principle, we could use other cycle permutations, but we usually don't bother. There's an important result about the eigenvalues of circulate matrices, but we'll consider the specific case where exactly k entries are 1 and the remaining entries are 0. We do this for two reasons. First, it's a case that's important for graph theory, and second, we can figure it out without knowing the theorem first. Remember, it's the journey, not the destination. In many cases, we can solve problems by starting with an ansatz. It's a guess as to the form of the actual solution. The ansatz is justified if it actually leads to a solution. One common ansatz in discrete math is to assume the terms of a sequence are powers of some constant. 1, r, r squared, and so on. So suppose A is an n by n circulant matrix, and an eigenvector x has the form 1, r, r squared, and so on. Now remember, concrete never hurts. Let's take a look at a specific case. So suppose A is a 6 by 6 matrix where the first row of A consists of three ones, followed by three zeros, and all successive rows shift the ones by one space. Then our matrix applied to our vector will give us... Now remember, definitions are the whole of mathematics, all else is commentary. If our vector is an eigenvector, then we need some lambda, where lambda times our vector gives us the output. Comparing the entries, we would need lambda times 1 to be 1 plus r plus r squared, lambda times r to be r plus r squared plus r cubed, and also, and if lambda equals 1 plus r plus r squared, we'd actually have equality for the first through fourth entries. But what about the last two? Remember, you can have anything you want as long as you pay for it. If we want 1 plus r plus r squared to be an eigenvalue, then for this entry, we need 1 plus r to the fourth plus r to the fifth to be 1 plus r plus r squared times r to the fourth. We can expand, and notice that we can get an equality if r to the 6th is equal to 1. And if r to the 6th is equal to 1, then our eigenvalue times r to the 5th gives us, which we can simplify, which also gives us the 6th entry of our product. So, remember, math ever generalizes. What if we had a different matrix? What if our ones weren't consecutive? For example, suppose we had a matrix that looked like this. Again, we'll assume that the eigenvector has the form 1, r, r squared, and so on. The matrix product gives us... And, again, eigenvalue r plus r squared plus r to the fourth is possible if r to the 6th is equal to 1. This suggests the following theorem. Let A be a circulate matrix. 
that an eigenvalue of a will be where r is an nth root of unity and the coefficients are the terms of the first row. Moreover, the ith term of the corresponding eigenvector will be r to power i minus 1. So let's try to find an eigenvalue and eigenvector for this matrix. So our theorem says that an eigenvalue will have the form where r is a sixth root of unity. Now the simplest root, the sixth root of 1, is just 1. So this matrix has an eigenvalue, lambda equals 2. And our eigenvector will consist of the powers of 1, which will just be And so we might ask, what sort of graph would produce a circulate matrix? Consider the non-zero entries of the first row of a circulate matrix. If this matrix corresponds to a graph, then these give the vertices adjacent to vertex 1. Now, suppose A, 1, K is equal to 1. In other words, vertex 1 is adjacent to vertex K. In the second row, this entry will be shifted one place. So a 2 k plus 1 will also be equal to 1. And in general, a j k plus j minus 1 will equal 1. So if vertex 1 is adjacent to vertex k, then vertex j is adjacent to vertex k plus j minus 1. And again, if this is hard to follow, remember, concrete never hurts. Let's look at a specific example. For example, suppose we have seven vertices, and vertex 1 is joined to vertex 2 and 5. We'd get a circulant graph if vertex 1 plus 1, 2 is joined to vertices 2 plus 1, 3, and 5 plus 1, 6. And we'd also want vertex 1 plus 2, 3 to be joined to vertices 2 plus 2, 4, 5 plus 2, 7. And vertex 1 plus 3, 4 to be joined to vertices 2 plus 3, 5, and 5 plus 3, 8. But there is no vertex 8. However, since the entries in the circulant matrix wrap around, we'll identify vertex 8 with vertex 1. And so we'd get the graph. And so this graph would have the adjacency matrix. And so its eigenvalues would be where r is a seventh root of unity. And we can get these from Dewab's theorem. These are given by for k equals 0, 1, 2, all the way up to 6. Now, except for the principal nth root of unity, which is just 1, the nth roots of unity will almost all be complex numbers. But there's a problem. If A is the adjacency matrix for a graph, then A is symmetric, and all eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a symmetric matrix are real. So, while it's conceivable that the complex parts of R will cancel when we find the sum of powers, what happens to the complex parts of the eigenvector? We'll take a look at that next.